I'm twenty-one and have been the legal guardian of my little brother at twelve for three years now, although I have been looking after him for way longer than that. When my dad died ten years ago, my mum went off the rails. She would be gone for weeks on end and eventually stopped showing up or calling at all. I pretty much sacrificed my teenage years to look after my brother. When she first left, I struggled so much. We had no family who wanted to support us on either side of the family. I remember not eating anything for like two weeks at one stage because my little brother was legitimately crying from hunger and so I gave him all the little food we had. We had no power, couldn't pay the bills, and so I would pretty much have to cuddle my little brother to keep him warm at night. We were just super lucky that the house was owned outright by my dad and my mom never bothered to transfer it to her name, hence we didn't pay rent or anything. We eventually caught a break when I got a job cleaning dishes at 14. Although I had to work pretty much every day after school from 4 to 11 p.m., my brother could come, and it was enough for us to survive. A few years after my dad died, I found out my mum had remarried and was living in Ireland. I honestly had a mental breakdown after that and wasn't okay for a while. However, even though I was not okay, I pulled through it and pretty much raised my little brother and provided for him, even if I sacrificed so much to do so. Fast forward to today, I'm in college and my little brother is 12 now. I became his legal guardian when I turned 18 and he calls me dad now, which is pretty special to me. Money is also not scarce. I have a better job now, part-time, and we rent out the spare rooms in our house. My little brother and I share a room to maximise the income we get from this. A week ago, my mother reached out to my little brother on Facebook, telling him how she missed him and that she regrets not being there for him. She's returning to our country, Norway, next week for a visit, and she wants to see him. She already tried messaging me, and I ignored her. I have told him he cannot see her, and have pretty much forbidden him from doing so. He doesn't really remember when she left, nor does he really remember or know how much I struggled and sacrificed for him not to be hungry, etc. I think he has a vague idea but I don't really want to go into detail with him. Because I know he'll blame himself for it all, so am I the a-hole for not letting my little brother see my mom? Not the a-hole. You are doing the right thing by protecting your brother from her, since he's older now. Maybe you could explain what happened so we can have a better understanding of your point of view. Original poster, I really think you need to sit him down and tell him. He probably already half remembers, and he might be inclined to ask your mother to fill in the blank some day. Don't let her downplay the sacrifices you were forced to make. He deserves the truth from someone who lived it, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole, but you owe him the truth. You're causing him pain by stopping him from seeing her, but not fully explaining why. It might not stop him wanting to see her, but you will seem less of the bad guy, and he is more likely to cooperate if he understands. I can see you're trying to do the right thing, and if you don't want to see her, that's fine, but I'm not sure it's in his best interest to have no access to his mom. You should also warn him what could go wrong here, and let him have the choice. Just be wary that refusing could backfire on you, and he sees her when you're not there. Not the a-hole. You're the parent at 18. It's your brother's business, but until then, you protect him. You know there will be fallout from your mum, new fallout to pile on the old fallout of which you have a mountain. Therapy with your brother to process your childhoods, also so that he knows what your mum leaving and never looking back to you both, and so that he fully starts knowing what the cost was to you, no childhood poverty and way too much responsibility. Not the a-hole. First of all, you're an awesome brother for doing what you did and for all the sacrifices you had to make along the way. You're further proof that not all heroes wear capes. Second of all, you're totally in the right to do what you're doing. She's owed nothing and doesn't deserve a second chance. There is absolutely no way you should allow your brother to see her. 
who knows what damage she can do. Just tell her to F off and keep on ignoring the two of you, as she's done that for the past decade. Finally, I think you may need to schedule some time away during her visit, as well as block her from your brother's Facebook account. Do everything you can to not allow her back into his life. Perhaps even contact the local authorities to let them know that the mother who abandoned you when you were 11 is back and potentially causing problems. Whatever it takes. Good luck. I definitely hope nothing comes from our visit. Next story. So, my parents met when they were 25 and 24. They are a cliche. My mum was a collegiate cheerleader and my dad was a D1 football player. They got married four years later and 30 years later they're still together today with three adult children. My older sister and brother are both 24 and I'm 20. They both want grandchildren, and right now, I'm the only one that they think can provide. My older brother is gay and is engaged to his fiance, and neither want kids. My sister is also engaged to a man, but she is likely not to have kids due to her having uterine cancer as a teen, which renders her infertile. She had no plans on adopting anything more than dogs, so no grandchildren for them. And then they have me. As far as I know, my swimmers are swimming, and I'm interested in women. But women are not interested in me. They haven't been since I was first interested in women, and I'm a senior in college now, and it's clear that I should just get used to being single. My parents constantly pressure me about dating and girls. I tell them I've tried, and it just doesn't work out. My six to two jock of a dad assures me that I should just talk to girls and they'll love me just like it worked out for him. But he's not aware of how different life is as a handsome athlete is for me, his ugly, socially awkward kid. My mum constantly says I have low self-esteem and as a psychiatrist, she thinks she can help. But I know there's nothing wrong with my self-esteem. Recently, when I visited home, my mum lamented that I have not brought a single girl home and that she really wants me to give her some grandkids and start a life of my own. My dad said that he's convinced I'm not trying because I'm afraid, which isn't true in the slightest. I told them I didn't feel like talking about my dating life. My mom then very passive-aggressively told me that as a mother, she really wants me to talk to her about this, and that I can talk to her about whatever. I said that this wasn't something I ever wanted to talk about again, and that they wouldn't get it anyway. My dad then said that they were two very good resources that I had if I need any help with this. He then said that if I don't get into dating in college, how am I ever going to start a family and give us some grandkids? This set me off, and I told them, you both need to give up any hope of grandkids or me getting married. It's not going to happen, and neither of you are remotely helpful. My mum cried and left, and my dad gave me a dirty look and went to comfort her. I then packed up my stuff and went back to my dorm. My siblings told me that I was being in a hole and completely ungrateful. I told them they kept pushing me. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Whether or not you have kids, it's entirely up to you and whoever you decide to partner with. However, you said a couple of things that don't mesh. One, you yourself said that women aren't interested in you and that you should get used to being single. Then you said that there's nothing wrong with your self-esteem and implied that your mother suggesting therapy was something completely out of line. Maybe you really don't have self-esteem issues. I am not a therapist, but saying something like, I should just get used to being single, would draw maybe some slight concern. All that said, no, you don't owe your parents grandchildren, but you should at least consider speaking to someone if you think you are destined to be single. Yeah, original poster is only 20. If he wants to be in a relationship at some point, he shouldn't just get used to being single. I'm 20, female, and I've never been in a relationship. Crap, I've never even kissed a guy. But just because I've not been in a relationship and I'm in the final year of college doesn't mean I'll never be in a relationship. At least I hope not. 
I need a rich husband to fund my life. Not the a whole to your parents, but maybe don't be so hard on yourself. Not the a whole. Nobody is entitled to grandkids, but as others have pointed out, you have at least a low impression of your ability to find a partner. Even if you think your self-esteem is good, you obviously don't think others see you that way. I hope you do pursue therapy, not by your mom because hell no, so that you can work out the way your brain perceives rejection, so it's less of a weight on you and your perception of how others see you. I don't think you're destined to be alone. I think you've just been alone so far. Just ask somebody who has only had abusive relationships. It isn't destined to only be abused. I think your future does have hope, and I hope my theory comes to fruition, but I also hope that you're able to find happiness. Not the a whole. Reproduction is always your choice, and nobody but your significant other gets a voice in that, not a veto a voice. But on the other stuff you said, you are only twenty. As a woman who grew up as a short girl with Akin, so bad my face looked like a pizza, and a mother who forced her to cut her hair short, who was bullied and still is a complete nerd, I can tell you love comes around. I got my first kiss at twenty-three, and my first boyfriend at twenty-four, who is now my husband. So don't despair just yet. Not the a whole. They chose to raise you and have babies. That does not mean you owe them grandkids. You do not owe them anything. They made their choices to have a family, and you and your siblings are making your choices to not have children. They will get over it, but it will likely be well into your forties before they get the message. Next time they bring it up, suggest they volunteer in programs for at-risk youth, and they can feed their need to be around children that way. Next story. My dad married my stepmom when I was eight, so I pretty much grew up with my stepmom and her family. I have two stepbrothers, and my older stepbrother is the joking, teasing, pissy type. He's married and has two kids, by the way. This whole thing started when he started making fun of my baby named Choice before I had my two oldest sons. Even though the two previous names my husband and I chose were normal, like Jason, Trace, Adam, etc. My stepbrother would constantly make fun of me and criticize the name, saying things like, Poor kid, isn't that the name of a famous P star? And this was my bully's name, so I remember my bully whenever I call my nephew's name. He criticized the name so much that I had to change it. He got my stepfamily on board by making fun of my choices too. It was so frustrating, as he'd excuse his behaviour by saying it's teasing and giving advice. I felt bad, because he ruined those names for me and caused me to choose other names. I'm currently pregnant with my third, and it's a boy. Once we announced the gender of our baby, my stepbrother kept pestering about the name we chose, wanting to know what it was. I just kept ignoring him. After he kept bringing this question up in every family function, last week was the final straw. I was visiting my dad and stepmom, and my stepbrother asked me to tell him the name I chose for my son, but I refused. He tried to get the family to pressure and corner me into spitting it out, as he said, but I blew up at him, saying I won't tell him, because then he'll make me hate it so much that I change it after he hassles me with his rude opinions and jokes and memes on the name. I told him my husband and I really, really like the name and won't risk giving him the chance to harass us into changing it. My stepbrother stared at me, looking stunned. He then looked at his wife, then excused himself to the bathroom. He looked very upset, and everyone noticed and gave me some looks. My dad later pulled me aside, saying what I said to my stepbrother and the way I spoke to him in front of everyone was unacceptable. He said he cared enough about me and my children to give me advice and share his opinions on my name choice, but I treated him with hostility and should prepare an apology for insulting him like that. Things have been tense since then. Not the a-hole. Why does stepbrother get to treat you like crap, but you have to apologize for standing up for yourself? Your dad needs to step back and have your back. Also, 
It's just so weird that Stepbrother is getting involved in this business. Is he competitive or jealous? Maybe I would triple down and tearfully complain that he is harassing a pregnant woman. Tell him. Well, we would have gone with your stepbrother's name, but we know this really obnoxious jerk with the same name. He's a bully using jokes as an excuse. Ignore the family pressure. If anything, stepbrother owes you an apology for the misery he put you through during the other two pregnancies. Not the a-hole. I find it confusing when people do things that upset and distress other people under the guise of joking or teasing, and that's fine. But when the recipient of the joke reacts, all hell breaks loose. You reap what you sow. You didn't insult him. He brought it on himself because he kept pushing. He pushed, and you blew up. Dad, he gave me unsolicited opinions on the names I'd chosen in the past. If I had wanted his opinion, I would have asked for it. I didn't. He also didn't give me advice. He made jokes and was rude about the names we chose. He's a bully, and he's mad I called him on it. He needs to apologize to me for his actions. I don't owe him one. Maybe don't let him meet your new baby until he apologizes for being an a-hole to you. You might have to do the same thing with your dad because he obviously doesn't see that your stepbrother is the problem. Not the a-hole. If it was truly about giving advice, he would have said it once and let it go instead of harassing you into changing it. He doesn't care about you and he isn't just giving you advice. Him and your whole family are a-holes. Don't back down from this, and honestly, you should call your dad out too since he didn't stand up for you when the rest of the family was belittling your name choices. I'd angrily ask my dad why it's okay for this stepbrother to do this stuff and why he never pushes back on that. I'd be tempted to say, oh sure, I'll apologize, then tell the stepbrother I'm sorry that your skin is so thin that you couldn't take what you dish out. Do not apologize, keep your name to yourself, and frankly, I tell them if he tries to ruin the name after you name your child, you'll call him by a horrible nickname of your choice. Not the a-hole. Your stepbrother was being a bully for years. He made you feel horrible. Your kid's names aren't his business either. He needs to learn to keep his opinions out of other people's life decisions since they don't concern him even in the slightest. Unsolicited advice is rude as hell and comes off as condescending and judgmental. You aren't the bad guy and he isn't the victim. Your dad only saw this tiny interaction. Does he know about the years of previous bullying and cruel jokes about your children's names? Maybe it looks like an overreaction from his vantage point. Because he doesn't know all the messed up stuff your stepbrother has said to you. You tell your dad your stepbrother has been destroying your pregnancy for years with his negative behaviours and how much he has hurt you, and you're fed up. You don't owe him an apology, he owes you one.